Hi everybody, good evening. Uh, it's Professor Edwards. I'm going to give you a brief uh, few notes and PowerPoint on the importance of ISO. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off last week where we talked about shutter speed and aperture. So ISO, what is ISO? Um, ISO is essentially a measurement of how sensitive your camera is to light. As you can see um, in the photos of the um, flowers, uh, we have our higher ISO numbers of 1600 down to our lower ISO numbers of 100. And you can tell some of the differences in between the different images. ISO simply means how sensitive the image sensor is in the camera to the amount of light present. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive the image sensor in your camera is, and therefore it allows you the possibility to take pictures in very low light situations. I like to tell my students to think of your ISO setting in terms of water. Um, for example, when your water faucet is dripping and you're trying to fill a glass with drips of water that is coming out very slow, um, the water faucet is running very slow. It's going to take a long time to actually fill up that glass. So think of slow ISO numbers like 100 and ISO 200 in correlation to the slow drip of a faucet trying to fill a glass. Um, the drops are slowly coming out of the faucet and are going to take more time to fill that glass. Um, just like when you have your number ISO numbers low, 100, 200, 400, um, they're going to take more time for you to take that photo. Now, if low numbers for your ISO are like water drops slowly dripping from a water faucet trying to fill a glass, then higher ISO numbers are much like your water turned on full blast and your water's running out of your faucet and you're filling your glass very quickly. Um, because these numbers uh, for your ISO numbers that are high, like 3200, 6400 plus, um, they allow you to shoot faster. Um, much like the water turned on at full blast is running out of your mm -hmm. faucet is going to fill your cup very fast. Um, shooting at highest, higher ISO numbers allows for you to shoot faster as well. So what does that truly mean? Um, lower number ISOs, your lower number, um, is essentially the lower your camera's response to light. Um, the higher number for your camera's ISO means uh, the more sensitive your camera is to light. So the lower the number is the lower your camera's response to light and the higher the ISO number is the more sensitive your camera is to that light. Um, ISO numbers on your Canons are as follows. Uh, you'll see when you get the cameras out in a bit. Uh, 100, 200, 400, 800, excuse me, 1600, 3200, and 6400. So, how do you go about setting your ISO on the Canons? Um, it's fairly easy. Um, you will locate the menu set button um, on your Canons and you'll click and right above where it says menu set, um, you will see the word ISO with a button. Um, click that ISO and up will come uh, your, main, your setting where you can manually set your ISO. Um, as you'll see on left of your screen, uh, no auto, no ISO auto. You must learn to manually set your ISO on the camera. Um, for the rotation exercises you will be doing in class, um, you'll find subjects and then take a series of photos using all of your ISO settings. Again, if you'll see uh, your ISO speeds when they come up on um, your menu set, um, you'll see auto 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400. Um, again, red arrow across through auto because you're going to manually set your ISO. Um, so when I say you're going to do rotation, um, continuing on the exercises you were doing last week with aperture and shutter speed, um, this time you're going to manually set your ISO and you're going to go out um, during class, hopefully uh, be, get out a little earlier so you can get some uh, daylight still, uh, find subjects, and then simply take a series of photos using all of your ISO settings from 100 to 6400. Um, do this a couple of times. Find a person, have them as a subject, find an object or a building, 
or you know a tree, something in nature, something around the building, and take the series, which is called a rotation, of photos using all of your ISO settings. And um, Dr. Keith will have the uh, instructions for you in class Thursday night. So together, ISO and shutter speed control how much light gets to your sensor, but we have to be aware. Um, there is a trade-off. Uh, with increased ISO, which means your higher numbers, comes quality deterioration of what you capture. So if you start shooting with higher ISOs, you have to realize you are going to lose quality with what you're trying to capture. As we see here in this photo is a fairly balanced uh, photo of the daffodils. Uh, they're up close in frame. Um, this was shot on 200 ISO in daylight as opposed to this one where I uh, turn the ISO up to 1600 and as you can tell as I got a close-up um, there's one flower that's in the middle but I lost the ability to really focus on any of the other three flowers around the one in the middle because I was shooting at a higher ISO. So the higher the ISO the more noise and we've heard that term before noise uh, sometimes in uh, photography and film it's still called grain um, you'll see this grain and noise in your photos. Um, particularly on the bottom flowers, uh, you really start to lose definition. You don't really see them. Um, there's shadowing. And mainly your eye goes right to the middle flower right there that's in focus. Everything else is grainy, out of focus. So while ISO of 100 or 200 um, will give you like a, like a smooth glass-like feeling, texture, quality for your photographs when you're shooting at a lower um, ISO. An ISO of 1600 plus is going to make uh, your images look grainy like sand. And it can even do so like, you know, even at some of the other um, 800 and 1600 especially will give you uh, this grainy sand-like look. Depends on what you're trying to envision for your overall look and feel of your photograph. So ISO interview, what do you need to know about ISO? These are a few of the things you will definitely need to know an ISO. Um, that ISO is a measurement of how sensitive your camera is to light. You need to know that the lower your ISO number, the lower your camera's response to the light. Um, the higher ISO number uh, means your camera is more sensitive to the light. Together, ISO and shutter speed control how much light gets to your camera sensor. And then you need to know why can this be troublesome? Why do ISO and shutter speed um, at a higher speed uh, get you into trouble? Um, finally, what tends to happen when shooting with your higher AF, uh, uh, excuse me, ISOs? And then finally, uh, you must learn to set the ISO mainly for all of your assignments. Um, that's a quick little breakdown of ISO. Uh, it goes into, uh, uh, in companion with the lecture we had last week over aperture and shutter speed. So hopefully you're getting an idea of an idea of what your ISO is and how in the next week or so we're going to be combining um, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed in your exercises. So um, take a few moments review and... See you uh, in class soon, I hope. Take care.